I remember getting a hand pass in this game against the 21s and just thrown out the, the hand and it, the ball didn't even hit my hand, it just went one side of it. I was like, that, that was weird. So I just went home and started giving out thinking I needed contact lenses and turns out I needed more than contact lenses. But that was the start of it all. I just booked that eye test and the whole thing snowballed from there. So my name's Peter Ryan, I'm an Irish paracyclist. Um, I'm in training for Tokyo at the moment and I, I'm visually impaired. Um, so I, I cycle on a tandem. And the moment, yeah, we're, we're in qualification myself and my partner, Sean Hassey. I have a condition called Libra's Hereditary Optic Neuropathy. Now, that means very little to most people. It didn't mean a whole pile to me either. But essentially, it, it takes between 80 and 90% of your vision. And it's your central vision in particular, in both eyes. So I'm working off of peripheral. Um, but it takes it over the space of about a 14 month period or nine to 14 months is give or take what the medical world will tell you about. Every Paralympian you'll meet has a, has a life story to, to get into the predicament or the place they're in. But um, yeah, so I was able-bodied up until I was 20, essentially. And hurling, football, soccer were my three main sports. But I suppose I'm identified as a hurler. I played county minor for tip. I would have been like on Harty Cup teams in Turla CBS, um, played in Harty finals or Ireland finals. And yeah, a lot of success there. But like even soccer now or football, like was like I was playing at a high level at most yeah. things I went like I was getting uh, soccer like trials with Irish teams when I was younger as well at soccer like so right. I, was, I enjoyed my sport and it was kind of sport was my little microcosm for life it kind of like I grew up on a on a field and that's where I had my rows and it's where you made your friends and it was um it's good times yeah all of a sudden you notice you can't see the puck out and it, you know, like, and then it's like, oh, like that range of vision was just getting smaller and smaller. So yeah. I was shedding the person that I was, mm. and I had this identity. I was 19. I was cock of the walk, driving a car, playing sports, making a few pounds. I was working on buildings, like all, all those things, like that, just like played into who I was. And and then all, now all of a sudden, there, like week by week, month by month, my eyesight is getting worse. And you're living in your head because you don't know where this is going to end. And you're only being told you won't ever go fully blind, but what does that mean? And there's no pamphlet on how to become blind. And in some ways, I, like I always say, like I nearly wished it was just flick, just like get a bang of a hurley back of the head, lose 90% of your vision. Like sometimes I was always wishing that, it's like just get me to the finish line because you can deal with something once you know what you're dealing with. But I didn't know how far this was going. And, and I wasn't dealing with it as regards in any traditional sense of talking about it or acceptance or any of that stuff. I was. It was probably a pain to be around, but I was a frightened young lad who was living in his head and pretending to be okay, and that manifested itself in a whole host of shit ways as well. But I turned to drink. I, like I say, I wasn't talking. I was like I ended up in a treatment centre for that, and that was probably that was part of the whole turning process. It was essentially the turning process because it was the first time I talked about it, first time I dealt with it in any rational way whatsoever, and broke down what it is and what it isn't, and. There was never, there, there, and still hasn't been our eureka moment, mm -hmm. Jolene. Like it's just working on yourself and and doing things that frighten you. And like I, part of my problem was this huge list in my head of things that I can't do, or things that I'll never be able to do, or things that just will make me inadequate in some way, shape, or form, or less of the person I thought I was. Because I always say like comparison is the thief of joy, mm -hmm. and I was comparing myself to this old me, but. Like I say, I went to the treatment centre, I got a shitload of counselling, I've no problem with, like I'm a big advocate for that side of it, but the para world was definitely like phase two of kind of coming to terms with things. It was a couple of months after the treatment centre, but it wasn't competitive sport, it was, it was and that came about through counselling as well, and it was like, this is an aspect of your life you have to get back to, because you still can, and I, I had my hang-ups about disability and para sport, and I was like, what is it? And, in my head, I was like, but sure, I was good at sport. And you know, it was completely based on a lack of knowledge. Like, but I went up to an open day in UCD and purely as a blank canvas, just wanted to find a sport and get back that aspect of my life and found the cycling and sparked the chat there. And things, like I say, they snowballed pretty quickly. Yeah, well, I suppose probably an asset to me was I never really cycled properly. Like, um, so like I could ride a bike, but I never, in any way, shape or form. So I hadn't to uh, untrain any major habits. Mm. The tandem is the most probably unique sport I'm yet to come across, like mm -hmm. in the sense, two of us on the one bike, but 
it's an individual sport allegedly but it's a complete team endeavor and like the communication piece is huge like when you think i can't see what's in front of me mm. but me and sean have to communicate like sometimes that's through pedal strokes where i know the road we might have a sharp bend coming to the right purely by what what we're doing we have a timing chain on the bike so if my foot is at nine o'clock on the left so is his mm -hmm. so there's little detail you can you can read the road through what's happening but complete trust like and like we go down hills, you'd be hitting 80, 90, I've done like 110 kilometers an hour before. It's like, and yet that's in the hands of someone else. And look at it, if, if we crash, taking a chance in a race, well, I'm willing to, I'm willing to do that myself because that adrenaline has given me something that I thought I'd never, I thought that part of my life was gone, so. Like Rio for me, because it probably wasn't, like it was a short campaign, three years and I didn't come home with medals, obviously, but it was about a lot more. It was like closing off a chapter in my life where it's like in that four years, your life has come a fair circle around like, and Grand was a holistic element to Rio, but Tokyo was about medals and kicking on. Get, like, getting a disability gives you a lot of perspective. And I thought, once upon a time that this was the worst thing that could ever happen to me, borderline that could ever happen to a human and I suppose look you're a few years older you live a bit more but like I'm genuinely happy I that's not something that everyone is I'm content I I want to make the most of this life it's not terminal I'm gonna do things that scare me like as much as I can and that's that's a pretty sweet spot when you can be excited about things that scare you um, so it just, it's making me live a lot more and for that I'm actually grateful.